Hi guys, so recently I passed my certification in Wheat VMware uh, vSphere Virtual Data Center. So now I'm a certified VMware you know, engineer. So in honor of my certification, I thought I'd do a VMware vSphere tutorial. And I got a comment a little while ago from a, a viewer that wanted to know how I can install ESXi on a VM. So this is what you do really just for testing purposes. I would not put this in production, even though technically you could, but highly, highly not recommended. So of course, the first thing you want to do is have VMware Workstation Player installed. And once you do that, let's go ahead and create our VM. So we're going to click on our create new virtual machine. It'll bring up the wizard. We're going to select the ISO to install from. So here I have my downloaded VMware ESXi 6.5 ISO I got off the VMware website. You could download it for trial. So if you're really new to this and you just want to learn, go ahead and download the free trial. There's no harm. We're going to select the file size. Um, I usually choose default 40 gigs because we're just going to test this create a couple VMs that aren't going to be very big. You can expand this if you plan installing a lot of VMs on your uh, hypervisor, your XI hypervisor, and go ahead and increase the disk size. So once we finish configuring the hardware, it gives you a few, um, a summary of the specs right here. We're going to go ahead and finish. You can change this later, so if you want to increase the disk space or if you want to expand, um, change out your networking, go ahead and do that. So once we power it on, it's going to go to the ISO we pointed to we pointed to during the wizard, and it's going to boot our ESXi installer. This is such an easy installation. If you haven't done this before and you're new to ESXi, it's very fast. So there's a uh, very fast installation, so just go ahead and download the free trial. If you have licensing, great. If you just want to test it, great. So 6.5 is the latest version they have out. Um, the major changes was amazingly networking. Uh, the virtualized networking environment was a big change with 6.5. This hypervisor now supports VMware virtualized networking. I think it's called um, NSE, I believe it's called. Um, but go ahead and boot it. And it's going to bring up a few questions. It's actually just going to mainly select the disk space. So it's going to go through the uh, checking your hardware. Right, it's going to go through and installing some modules here. Um, and as long as you have um, a relatively decent system, this will work. A relatively newer system, if you're trying to install this on a physical machine that's very old, uh, it's going to fail. I've seen this fail on older test machines. So make sure if you're putting this in production that you are running this in a supported environment. So we're running it in the VMware Workstation Player because it actually has, um, for testing purposes obviously, but also because Oracle VirtualBox had significantly slower performance when I tested it, running the same sort of setup with multiple hypervisors and Virtual Center Server running. And Virtual Center Server, if you're new to this, is the management tool, it's the higher level management, so you can manage multiple ESXi hypervisors through Virtual Center Server. So it's really great for um, if you want to do any high availability, fault tolerance, um, vMotion, um, moving your high, uh, VMs from hypervisor to hypervisor, you need Virtual Center Server. So first you start out with the ESXi, then you install Virtual Center Server. And if you want to go one layer higher and you want to have like a hybrid environment where you have um, your private cloud and then your public cloud, like Amazon, you go and use um, vRealize. So that's the other product for, and uh, vCloud. So those are the other products that VMware puts out for the cloud hypervisor type solution. So we we'll go here, here's just telling you, make sure you're running in a compatible environment. There is a guide, take a look at it. We're gonna accept the licensing, hit F11. Take sub licensing here. Um, and that's going to check for devices. Of course, since we're running this in a uh, VMware workstation, it's really going to just find the 40 gigs we signed it. If you're putting this in a production environment, you can install it on a SAN, you can install it on NOS, you can install it over iSCSI, you can install it on a USB drive. You can, I wouldn't recommend that, but you can. Um, so you can install it in many options. It doesn't have to always be local storage, just if you do, be careful. 
We chose our default keyboard and now we're going to give it a root password. So this hypervisor at its essence is a Linux machine. So running processes, the processes emulate a hardware environment. So just remember that. And then once we select our password, we'll go ahead and hit enter and hit F11 to install. So that's pretty much it for this installation. Relatively easy to complete this. So once you've done that, it's going to go ahead and install. It takes maybe 15 minutes, not very long at all. So if you're running this in a production environment, again, make sure you're running on compatible hardware. Make sure you're installing it on, it's always, I would always recommend local hardware over configured in a RAID. So physical server, two drives, mirrored, at least two drives. Of course, there'll be more, two drives, mirrored. And then if you're having a, putting this in a data center and you want um, like the high availability, the fault tolerance, the vMotion, moving your VMs from hypervisor to hypervisor, then you're definitely going to want some sort of network storage. So it can be NFS, even though it's slower. It can be uh, a SAN over fiber, which is usually recommended, or um, fast Ethernet, 10 gig E. So you can do that sort of solution. That's actually a better solution. You can also do it over iSCSI, which is also considered a good solution. Um, so there's many solutions of how you can set up multiple hypervisors. But again, that shared storage is really essential for um, some of the more advanced features, right? So like distributor resources. So making sure there's an even load across your hypervisor if you're running a large number of virtual machines. Once the installation is done, you will be prompted to restart. On restart, you'll notice it's a tab control. It's a console. There's no mouse interaction. You hit tab and function keys to be able to access the menu. You will not manage your virtual machines through here. 6.5 um, is has a web interface in addition to the Windows client you can install. You can use the web interface, and that's true for 6 as well. So versions uh, VMware ES6i 6 and 6.5 have a web interface, and I'll show it to you right here how you can access it. Um, but the web interface is great for managing, controlling. So they put a lot of the functionality you found in the Windows client in the web browser, in the web client, so to be able to access and manage your hypervisor. So you will not be managing it usually from the console. Troubleshooting it, yes. Configuring the IP address, uh, the management networking. Um, there's logs in here for troubleshooting. You can go ahead and take a look at here we are in restart. So here we got an IP address, but this is not the IP address I want. I want to be able to access it from the browser of my host machine. So I'm running Windows 10. I have my VMware workstation installed. I want to be able to access the browser from my Windows 10 to my VM. So let's go ahead and let's go into networking. We're going to edit virtual machine settings. I'm going to set it to point to my wireless adapter. So I'm going to do a bridge connection. And I'm going to bridge to my wireless network at home. And now we're going to go ahead and go into networking and we're going to restart our networking. Um, so if you hit F2 here, it prompts for your root password. It lets you go in and we're going to configure. And by restarting, it's going to configure the networking the way we want. So we're going to restart the networking. So we hit F2, we put in our root password. We hit F2 again, so we hit F2 twice. Restart management network. Press F11 for OK. And on restart, you can also go in here and check the configuration. So now you can see again new IP address 10.0.1. So that's our subnet, my subnet at home. That's pretty common for most wireless networks. So now I can go to my Windows 10 browser and type in this IP address, and it should bring me up to the web interface for my ESXi hypervisor. From there, we're able to manage it. We create VMs, uh, take a look at our data store, look at the virtual switches, tons of functionality in managing. If you want to take really quickly, if you're brand new to ESXi, take a minute and look around at different features in the console. Look at where you can enable SSH, you can enable the command line, you can restart networking, change networking, point your DNS, um, view the system logs for troubleshooting purposes.
Now once you're done with that, let's go ahead and open up a browser. So here I am with Chrome. I put in my IP address 10.0.1.52, log in with my root username and password. I get an error. So I noticed this with Chrome. I keep getting errors. It doesn't work with Chrome. So I'm maybe a different version of Chrome. So if you're using a different version, it works. That's great. I found that I had no problems using Internet Explorer. Uh, kind of unfortunate since I really like Chrome, but um, I went ahead and used Internet Explorer to log into the web interface for my ESXi 6.5 hypervisor. And here we are. Immediately takes you to um, the system configuration of the hypervisor. So it shows you the hardware configuration, usage, it has some of the um, most commonly used actions on the top there. So if you notice the first thing it says is get B center server. So that's virtual center server for the higher level management of multiple hypervisors. In addition, that has the shutdown, restart, put into maintenance mode, which will kind of turn off, disable um, VMs from being running on your this hypervisor while it's in maintenance mode. You can take a look at storage. So you see our one data store. If you want to test more, you can go ahead and go to our virtual machine setting, add a second hard drive, create a second data store. So in reality, if you have a network solution and you present additional storage, you can go in here and you can browse for that storage and then create different data stores and it'll format that data store. You can also take a quick look at the networking. So it's recommended by VMware that you should have at least two or three uh, network ports on your hypervisor. So it is recommended that two of them be management ports and at least one of them is for your VMs. So the management ports control the movement of vMotion, uh, fault tolerance, high availability type management traffic. Um, and then the third one at minimum, the third one, you have definitely have more, um, is for traffic for the VMs. So if the VMs, I mean, as the OS, the server needs to send out packets or connect if it's a web server, for example, VM, all that web traffic will go over that third port. So again, usually it's recommended now, I believe it's minimum two, uh, but also three if you can. Of course, if you're doing it in this environment, since it's all virtualized, you can give yourself as many network ports as you want. Great practice to configure virtual switches. Maybe in another video, I'll show setting up virtual switches. And then if you have multiple hypervisors, you do a distributed virtual switch, which helps with um, managing your um, virtual machines over multiple hypervisors. All right, so thank you guys for watching. Definitely, definitely try the latest version of VMware ESXi 6.5. Make sure you check your hardware guide that it is compatible, that you're running supported hardware, and go ahead and test it out. This is a great, great product to set up a private cloud for your company and definitely get the best possible hardware utilization from the servers that you're buying or even currently have. Again, you get a 60-day free trial there is a free version of ESXi you can download as well. Um, it is limited by, by the number of processors, I believe, that it will um, support. So again, it's free, but it is hardware um, limited. So definitely check it out. If you have a small environment, if you just want to learn, you'll download the free version. It has no expiration on it. You actually get a key with no expiration. If you download the commercial version, 30-day free trial but definitely great for learning and practicing. All right, so thank you for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.